totally. Like it's total improv that we're just like making work because we're moving the ball. Similar, um, like in the machine game, there's one where like there's nothing happening downfield. Like I throw you the around uh, off the centering pass, and then you throw uh, like there's nothing. You can't continue it downfield. You throw in uh, a 45 back like forward pass to me like which honestly they were playing bad defense on like watching it back like valley gives that and then mikhail gives you one on the same point Mm -hmm, which is like honestly that's one of my pet peeves like i don't i hate when people give that up so free like especially on that backhand side like such an easy righty backhand throw for most people that like when you just face guard and are like five yards off yeah and and people do it like to no end it's actually super interesting but and i use it all the time and i feel like i get it like on yeah, those forty five back if either of you were playing D that way, TK would just be like freak the fuck out. I mean I think stuff. yeah, you get it a lot, Kins. I think I get it so I think pe- people much. underestimate your quickness. I think people when they mark you in the handler set, they're like, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna lock them down. And then it's like, well, no, you're not. Like Yeah, no, I don't know no, what not. it is. Like I I would love that. for the like, the bird guys to get that more too. It would be so funny to have a stat on that because I get that way higher like over 25 percent, i would say like close to like a quarter or more of the time i'm like fat pace 45 back especially in the middle because i get it in the truck game at um on universe at least twice and i just remember even after that point being like why the fuck are you giving me that (laughs) and the funny thing about that is i think maybe aj was on me maybe that point but like he had given it to me once earlier in the game so i'm like why are you giving this to me like you've also seen it before you know it's coming, and yet you are adjusting. That's crazy. It almost makes me think that teams don't mind it as much as we do. As I don't do. understand how Which could you not. I don't it's like really, I'm running upfield with no mark. Like yeah. it doesn't make any sense. Like I, think, but like I think teams are really playing more denial defense. They're just they're just trying yeah, to take everything away, willing to take the chance. Because like I agree, AJ is a great defender. Like he's probably not doing that just to do it. Like I'm sure there's a reason. Like. J Val's a great defender. I'm sure he, they, I'm sure they like, that's like what they're doing. I don't know. I think it's dumb. And cause to me also, it's like such a, you know, there's like those moments almost where like the pressure or tension is building, like the defense is taking away the looks you want and you can like kind of feel the pressure building. And like that cut is always like a deep breath, like recent. It is. It's like like we're going up field. You're looking forward. Like it's always that relaxing Mm, deep breath. Exhale. Exactly. And I think that's why you just can't give it up. Like, cause when you're keeping them back there and forcing them to throw, like so much harder. So, you know, that's a good point. So last night we're, we're at bird practice. We were working on, um, well, we worked on, uh, I guess, without t- saying exactly what we were working on, basically st- staying positive, getting resets that are positive of the disc uh, um, in the inside, in the inside space, the skinny space, whatever. I'll just say it. Um, and we were trying, we were talking about pros of doing that versus catching a negative reset, like the Pepe's, like w- overall, what we call Pepe's. Um, I think we're okay with both because as long as they lead to another pass, like ideally a break look or something or give go opportunity, but it is that sort of pressure relief, right? Like there's also like this psychological feeling of like, thank God, like I'm in an unmarked upfield position now versus like, I've just lost yards. We have to fight to get it back. The game slows down when you catch it like that. I feel like yeah. when you catch it like 45 behind Pepe's and it's like the game is like everybody was freaking out and your defender's on you and you're like, Ugh. but that one's just like, it's kind of like chill. You just like clap, catch it and just like dish. Yeah. yeah the metaphor is like you twist the cap a little bit on like the super carbonate. Like you shake, you like, you're, the sprite. like you're like shaking up, Ooh. like, like when the defense is you're clamping like, down, you're like shaking up the bottle. Psst. And when you, and when, yeah. And when you get Whoa. those, you just like just a little bit of release. Did you make that up? That's good. Yeah. Cause I think it's, I mean, it's really a simple, just pressure metaphor. I think we're going for, but I like yeah. that one. Yeah. I like and, that one. and it's funny how it does really feel like that. But yeah, because the um, machine point I was talking about, we also do it with Buck and we can't get anything downfield. But I think that was a great like example of like when you can't get things downfield, how to just like get it, you know, start just focusing on the handlers. Because I think that's what we were talking about 
a little bit like we were saying, like, you know, the bird stack was too deep. And I think like in situations like that where you throw like an under and you don't get in that many yards and then you like can't hit an under and maybe you throw a reset, like it makes sense sometimes that the stack gets deep. And I think that's just a good time to be like, all right, handlers, like let's play some 3v3 here for a second and get yeah. a good upfield look that's going to like actually, you know, open up a new window and make a good opportunity for someone to cut downfield. Cause it's like what we were talking about too, with the, with Tucker and Carter, like if you're just swinging the disc back and forth and like, there's no real threats, it's just so hard to get open downfield. Like it's just really, really difficult. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think that's another huge pro, right? We, we, we also touched on, on, on that at practice and, um, I think the overall sentiment is what I want to convey more than what we were even working on. Like, I don't care how you do this, but, um, if you are disconnected from your downfielders, um, all of your cutters who are out of position and too deep and being fronted, if you can just reset the disc slightly positive, all of a sudden those defenders are out of position. You can send it deep to those receivers. Uh, but if you even lose five, six, seven yards, you can't shoot to that person. I mean, that's like a 15. Yeah, exactly. And as soon as you catch an under, it's so easy to shoot to people because they're like, you know, 10 yards deep of you. Like, it's just a beautiful, what was Bryce calling his, cause he had chunk yardage. He had read option, but was there not one in between that kind of was like explaining this, the different phase of the game. There was something else. Yeah. I don't, I think his was. Um, read option, chunk yardage, end zone, reset. So, so what I would call the build phase, he calls read option. Well, actually, I'm not sure if that's accurate. Maybe right. his build is different than my. His maybe read it's reset. Is than what I think maybe because I feel like read option was like pool play, kind of like starting the. Yeah, the point. I think you're right. So maybe this is just reset. I think this is just reset and just like you're resetting to get to chunk yardage. I consider it build. That's what I would call build. So like, yeah, I like build better because reset kind of implies to me, it has the connotation of like negative, like those kind of things. Whereas like negative yardage and like that kind of stuff for for me, reset is like, we're not able to like, if we use nuts language, which is, um, let me see if I remember it, um, pressing the advantage, maintaining advantage or losing an advantage. I think like you're always fighting for advantage. Mm -hmm. Um, in a reset, you're maintaining and maybe resetting advantage um, or maybe losing. Um, but in the, in a build phase, like it's it's where you're still trying to press the press the advantage, put pressure on the defense. But at at, at some point, you do have, like it's more par- important to possess than attack. Um, and ideally, your resets can quickly sequence into a build, but. That's the difference for me. And, and, and actually going back to that machine point, although like the flow was, it was honestly kind of choppy because like it's clipped to be a little bit faster leading up to the throw from Quinn to Calvin. But like they, they, they allow our resets to be more or less building to something. And then that final one, when Buck gets it to, he, he can, what do we call that? Chisel, whatever. He's able to hit that upfield reset to Quinn. Quinn then hits Calvin on his skinny and he hits chance on his skinny and then chance th- throws the goal. So like, I'm honestly kind of putting my coach hat on hoping that a few mama bird people are listening to this and saying like, okay, Mike, I kind of get what you're saying at practice last night and um, maybe buy into it a little bit more. Underrated part of that play. I was downfield. And I forget exactly what happened, (laughs) but I think they were trying to bracket or do something. I don't think you were on that point. I was, was. was. and I was, and I, I think maybe it was golf guarding Jarv or something, but I went, made like an under cut because golf, either they were bracketing or I could just tell golf had his eyes on me and not on Jarv. And I kind of made like a 75% under jar undercut while pointing at Jarv and chance read it perfectly and hit drive in the back corner yeah yeah underrated just fyi but 